There are some dates in life you don't forget, and the 17th of July 1944 is one I will always remember. The memory of what happened on that day, even after 71 years, is still fresh in my mind. On that day, I was a bomb aimer on Lancaster DV385 KCA of 617 Squadron uh, with other aircraft which attacked the V2 uh, rocket and assembly facility at Bizerne in the Pas de Calais area of northern France. There have been numerous bombing attempts to destroy the facility at Wizerne's, but on the 17th of July 1944, 617 Squadron were able to finally put this site out of operation. In early August this year, I had the opportunity to once again fly over the site at Wizerne and see the area from a very different perspective. John Zarno kindly offered to fly myself over to France from Shoreham Airport on a beautiful sunny day. The views over the English Channel were excellent. It was interesting to see the equipment now available to help the pilot navigate, quite different from what we had back in 1944. On the way to Wizerne's, we flew over two other 617 Squadron targets. The first, a large concrete bunker at Watton on the edge of the Epilec Forest. This also was intended to be a V2 rocket assembly and launch facility and also housed the liquid oxygen plant. On July 24th, 1944, I was part of a 617 squadron led by Wing Commander Tate and there were direct hits scored on the bunker as well as much damage to the supporting uh, infrastructure resulting in the site being abandoned. We then flew on to Mimoek, which was the site of the V3 supergun facility. This facility housed a number of gun barrels in an underground concrete bunker, with the barrels aligned on a trajectory to London, 80 miles away. At 420 feet long, the V3 superguns were the largest guns in the world. The V3 weapon site was a particularly difficult target to see and hit as all the whole facility uh, was underground. The target on the surface consisted of two concrete and steel lined covers of the massive gun barrels. This site was attacked by 617 Squadron on the 6th of July 1944. Bombing was accurate and one 12,000 pound tall boy hit the corner of the concrete slab, causing part of it to collapse, and to this day, from the air, you can still see the damage. After leaving Mimiwake, we headed on to Wizern to the former V2 rocket site, and eventually we identified the large concrete dome that protected the site as we flew over the Wizern area. Our pilot, John Zano, circled several times, allowing me to get a good view and to take pictures of the dome. I remember on July 17, 1944, our approach brought us in from a northwesterly direction, and as we approached the site, I could see the dome clearly from 18,000 feet, and I remember the tall boy bomb releasing and watching it fall all the way to the target. I saw it explode close to the northwest edge of the dome, which was the right place for the bomb to do maximum damage to the underground structure. Although the site was extremely well protected by the 16 foot thick concrete dome, the site had one major design flaw. Although the concrete roof was impenetrable due to the thickness of the concrete, it was surrounded by soft chalk. When the tall by bomb landed, uh, close to the dome and penetrated into the soft rock, its uh, explosive produced a, a shock wave which destroyed many of the tunnels beneath the dome, effectively putting the facility out of action before any V2 rockets could be fired. The site was abandoned some weeks after the attack. Throughout the tour, I was interviewed by several journalists from the local French newspapers. They were thrilled to be able to meet someone from 617 Squadron who had taken part in the raid 
in, on the 17th of July 1944, who together with then 617 colleagues collectively were able to put the V2 site at Bazerne out of operation. I answered many questions about the method of attack, which helped the museum staff obtain uh, a better understanding of the course of events during the attack. I was even able to show Mr. Sellier where my bomb exploded by using a model of the Wizern site. We were then very privileged to be allowed onto the roof surrounding the dome where I was able to look down at the position where our bomb landed and again show the staff at the museum the point of impact. It felt quite strange to be standing at this point 71 years after the attack but still very satisfying to know that that operation helped put the facility out of action and prevent the V2 rockets from being fired at London from this site.